thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and thank you to the Society for inviting me. <clears throat> I just have to apologise in advance for my laryngitis, but I'll, I'll struggle on. If you can't stand it, you can always put your hand up and tell me to stop. Um, okay, optimising outcome with vein graphs. Um, I guess it's the grey hair that's given me this subject. But anyway, the Safinus vein graft is, um, oh, that's very nice of you, thank you. I survive. <laughs> the Safinus vein graft has, of course, you know, been used for 50 years or more in arterial surgery. And it is, has u unique uh, remodeling and disease, and I don't need to reiterate that for this audience. But on the whole, by a month after insertion, there is intimal hyperplasia, which you can demonstrate in animal models. And it, this is inversely related to flow. Three years on, that's when atherosclerotic changes may occur, particularly with elevated lipids and smoking. So the best way to close your vein grafts is to keep smoking. Uh, there's no question about that. And it's, it seems to be, have far more vicious effect on the vein grafts than on your native coronary arteries, actually. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, there's the problem. Uh, a, a vein graft that looks quite nice. This is a very old slide, as you can see, because it's the LAD. Um, and here's one with a lot of bites taken out of it at seven years. And obviously, this is the stimulus, one of the many stimuli uh, to use multiple arterial grafts. But that's a different question. So now 50% of patients have some narrowing at a year, but most have not progressed by five years post CBG from <clears throat> recent papers, 10% close within the first weeks, particularly when antiplatelet therapy is not used, and particularly if it's not used early enough. Uh, if the uh, um, aspirin is delayed for a day or two after operation, or uh, whatever else you're using, persantin or clopidogrel, then you're gonna have trouble. What's interesting, and maybe someone correct me and I've missed it, but there is minimal information on the relationship between the type of anastomosis versus the frequency and severity of anastomotic strictures. And it's really surprising. You'd think we would, by now, have a bit of information about that, but we don't. So, the one to two year patency is around about 75 to 80%. Um, and this comes from, uh, from these, these studies, and I, I heard you discussing Ruby in the last uh, session. There's no doubt that early SVG occlusion is associated with uh, active platelet activity. So here's PFA 100, and as these levels fall, so does the incidence of occluded vein grafts. And here, uh, as this uh, UTXP2 rises, so does the incidence of occluded vein grafts. So platelet activity early after operation is very important and the inhibition of it is important, which is not surprising. After all, the biological response to trauma is to make, amongst many other things, to make your platelets more sticky, which if you happen to be in the jungle and attacked is very handy, but not perhaps in surgery. So this is a quite interesting meta-analysis from Benedetto, who is a very prolific writer, um, comparing the failure rate of radial arteries, as a meta-analysis, with vein grafts. And the point I want to give to you, there's a well-known series here, sufficient, significant numbers. There's Buxton, um, <clears throat> Gordino. But notice, the overall event rate is virtually the same. It's 14% uh, and 14.6% for, for vein grafts. A bit of a salutary meta-analysis, actually. <clears throat> and I have to mention endoscopic versus open technique. I think you've all been busy criticizing the Ruby trial, but nevertheless, 894 patients, one year follow-up, and one of the sub-analyses was comparing endoscopic uh, to open, 85% patency versus 74% patency, but only a proportion of patients were restudied. However, this worked out uh, with a relative risk of 1.14 and, and quite highly significant. But I'll come back to endoscopy in a moment because actually I'm very much in favor of it, <laughs> despite arguing the opposite. The point is it takes longer, and it requires training. Um, and that's important, and I think it's, that's obvious, but not everyone actually follows the implications of that statement. But you, do get a, you can get a better functional and cosmetic result. Well, certainly you can. The patient walks down the corridor in a normal way, rather than dragging their leg to the shower. 
And recent studies show equivalent graph patency, actually. And also, the instance of recurrent angina, very similar to that of the open method. And this comes from this consensus statement which David Cheng put together for ISMIX um, about 10 years ago. So how might we improve vein graph patency? Because it, no, it isn't as good as an IMA to the LAD, which should be around 95% or better at one year and similar at five years and maybe as high as 90% at 10 years. Why can't, how could we do that? Well, we know about pressure control. I spent some of my early life involved in pressure control. So excessive pressure at the time of vein harvest, abuse of the vein when it's um, harvested from the leg is going to cause a lot of trouble. And indeed, pressures in excess of 300 millimeters of mercury, which you might think is a difficult thing to achieve, but actually extremely easy with a 20 mil syringe and a cannula, this is certainly going to cause damage. But I think this is widely known. Then there's the effect of aspirin, persantin, and more recently, clopidogrel. These subjects are going to be dealt with in subsequent talks, but external support is a very interesting phenomenon. It was investigated by uh, uh, Gianni Angelini's group some 10, maybe 15 years ago. <coughs> and as many things do, it's come around again uh, in a different form, but the principle the same. And open versus endoscopic harvest, which I have mentioned. But preservation solutions, could it just be that plain, ordinary blood is not the best preservation. We know normal saline is the last thing you should do because normal saline is faintly acidic and is very good at destroying endothelium. But there are some other preservation solutions on the horizon worth thinking about. Just go back to some <coughs> ancient work that I was involved in a very long time ago. Um, and this it compares, um, uh, basically these are vein, this is in the, the stump tail macaque monkey who uh, received vein grafts uh, to the leg. And this is vein graft cholesterol in milligrams per 100 milligrams. And this are untreated and these patients are, uh, these are on platelet inhibitors. And this is the, that's the normal vein in light blue. This is low pressure, that is to say less than 250 and high pressure, 300 or more. <coughs> so first of all, in the untreated, you can see the effect of high pressure. You can see the benefit of platelet inhibition. But in an atherogenic diet, where we achieved cholesterol levels of 300 milligrams per 100 milligram checked, then here, especially if you combine high pressure dilatation of the vein with an atherogenic diet, you are going to get a very uh, considerable amount of cholesterol um, in your vein. So we just look at bypass grafts and we look at occlusion <coughs> and graft stenosis. Usually we have flow limiting lesions. This is a, by graft stenosis, we usually mean a luminal stenosis of more than 70% and FFR less than 80. And perhaps ischemia in the myocardial territory, probably quite well seen usually with the uh, uh, echocardiography, and certainly acutely seen very well with transesophageal echo, should that problem occur in the operating room. So here we, ha and we have graph failure. And then clinical graph failure, how does it um, reveal itself? This is post-operatively, of course, with anginal syndromes, with acute coronary syndromes, or on stress testing. So you might have a patient with possible clinical graph failure, and it may be attributable to the territory supplied by the graft, then you may move to definite graft failure, and then you have to look at the timing. Is it acute? Is it occurred in the first 30 days? Is it after the patient left hospital? Is it late? Or is it very late, which is usually related to high cholesterol levels and lack of any kind of secondary prevention? This is a paper not so long ago from uh, Haas, Camp, and colleagues. This was extracted from the PREVENT-4 trial, over 3,000 patients, and one year follow-up for vein graft failure. So this is vein graft failure. And this is comparing how these grafts were uh, preserved. This one had saline, and I've mentioned that. This one had blood, and this had buffered, uh, buffered saline, a particular kind of buffering of saline. And if we look at the, uh, this is the patient level of our uh, vein graft failure. You see it's quite a significant difference, 0.001. And if we look at the uh, graft, uh, vein graft failure at the graft level, again, 
buffered saline seems to make a difference. So something to watch. There may be some more products on the way. And just showing it more graphically, this is years out to five. This is the event rate. And the green line are the buffered. Those patients received uh, whose veins had been treated with buffered uh, saline solution. So just think a little bit about late patency. Now, the figures are wide, 50 to 80%. 50 to 80% of patients are patent in heterogeneous groups of patients. Most patients are not studied routinely, and so they're usually studied for symptoms. But the patency is around 80%, interesting, when the long venous vein is used to bypass the LED, and that comes out of this old paper by Loop, um, 1986. Not suggesting you put a vein graft on the LED, but it's just interesting to know what the patency rate is. What is quite interesting, I think, is from uh, uh, the uh, Cascade trial, is that clopidogrel and aspirin do not improve graft patency uh, or cardiovascular events at one year. Almost certainly do in the first few weeks, but not at one year. So there's little, ev there's little support to put patients on clopidogrel um, at around one year simply to keep the vein grafts open. There may be other reasons, but that's not a good one. And what about other vein grafts? Well, short saphenous vein grafts are not used nowadays very much, but they have a similar patency to long saphenous vein, and that's about the most recent paper one can find. Cephalic veins are dreadful, but we know that. And cryopreserved allograft veins are disappointing. Of course, when a cardiac surgeon uses the word disappointing, you, you know what that means. It's absolutely catastrophic. So in conclusion, <clears throat> the preservation of the vein graft endothelium remains extremely important for graft patency. There really are no good RCTs available. Normal saline is detrimental to endothelial cells. But the question I'd like to leave you with is that at 10 years, will the efficacy of drug eluting stents surpass vein grafts in non-LAD vessels? Thank you very much.